So your XFX3 has arrived and you've plugged it in and booted it up and you're looking at that big, beautiful, full color screen and you're wondering to yourself, how do I do anything besides just play with the presets here? Well, I'm here to tell you it's easy. Let me show you how. But first... The best way to program the Axe Effects and get the most out of it is to download the free software called Axe Edit that's available online at the site. I'm going to show you a download link over here and get to editing it that way. But uh, before you do that, there's kind of three steps you got to go through to get all set up for it. So step number one is connect to the computer with a USB cable and download the USB drivers, whether it be for Mac or Windows, showing you that over here. And again, link below in the description on the video. Step number two that I recommend is to download a piece of software they call FractalBot. This allows you to load this software when you've got the AxeFX turned on and connected and look to see if there's a new firmware update or anything like that. It's the kind of thing you want to keep up to date with, especially if you're going to use patches that other people have written or you just want to use the latest, greatest things that they've added to it because they keep updating and making it better. And then thing number three is to download the AxeEdit software. And right now what I want to do is show you how to use that AxeEdit software, just kind of a basic 101 lesson here of the first things that you can do programming your first sound so let me switch over so you can see that okay so i've loaded up the software and you can see i have the 000 first preset loaded up and from this software i can hit the presets button over here and you can see there are a ton of presets that you can grab in here that just come in the box and so when you want to get to programming your own sound though you just keep going off to the right and somewhere's over here in the 300s, you have sounds. I have a bunch of my own programmed in here already, but I'm just going to load up 384 here, which is a basic empty patch, and we'll start writing your first sound and teaching this lesson. Um, before we make the sound, though, I want to show you one cool thing you can do if you want to try sounds that other people made that they're sharing on uh, what's called the Axe Exchange. You can go over here, it's Axe Change, excuse me, and hit that, and this is all the sounds that people are submitting. I've only got it set to show 15 per page, but there are, as you can see, 744 sounds. And you can also get cabinets, uh, cabinet IRs. That's a separate thing. I'm going to talk about that in a different lesson. But here, if I just hit this Tony Iommi sound, I just double click it and it loads right up. So, I can save that if I want over here, if I happen to load somebody else's sound that I really like. But we're not going to do that. I'm just going to go down to 3D3 and then back up here so it's blank. And now we're going to talk about loading up your own sound. Okay, so we have a blank slate here. We want to get to making our own sound. First thing I have to do is add an input block. You go to, these are lanes here. You can have multiple different things going on. Again, this is a one-on-one -on -one lesson, so I'm just going to show you a basic amp cabinet and the output of it. So the first thing you have to do is set the input. I right click on the box and that brings up this uh, menu here. I just set it to input one. I go all the way over here to the right. You don't have to go that far, but I do. And I right click the box again, go to output, output number one. And then this little line right here is like telling it I'm going to plug a cable in. And it opens up all these lanes and I'm just going to connect the cable from there to there. And now I've got the guitar going into the Axe Effects in a straight line with no cabinet or amp. It's just the pure sound of the guitar. And so what I want to do is start with an amp. So I'm going to do like a bog ramp. Again, right click, amp, amp one. And you click on this over here. I went kind of fast. Let me show you that again. I've added the amp and then down here there's amp type. Don't worry about channels or any of this other stuff right now. Again, this is just a basic one-on-one lesson. I left click over here in the dialog for that. And here are all the amps. Now I want to use a Bogner. They call it Bogfish. I'll go Bogfish Strato. And the, the amps are all basically 12 o'clock. This is just an amp with the knobs all set to the top. And you can hear it sounds scratchy and awful. It's because there's no cabinet. You're plugging an amp directly into a recording unit. So let me get a cabinet, right click here, go to cab, and there is a ginormous list of cabinets. It's going to load, you can have up to four cabinets on one sound, so you can have the amp going like left and right to two different cabinets if you want, or change how it's panned. It's pretty cool, but we're just going to stick with one cabinet. And I just go to this thing here called picker, where I can pick the cabinets. And here they are, and they are sorted by the size of the speaker. It's a one by four, one by six, one by eight and so on and so forth. I'm going to go way out here to some 4x12s 
And you can see they're noted with a bunch of weird numbers on them. Uh, that means the number refers to a mic. So 57 is an SM57. If you know the Shure SM57 mic, it's a very standard mic. I'm going to use a 121 here. The A's, B's, and C's, that's just different positions of the mics that they put on when they made the uh, cabinet IR. So I'm just going to use that one. Little classic rock sound there. And that's the very basics of it. There's your amp, there's your cabinet. I haven't messed with any of the settings. I've just got a sound like right out of the factory. Now I can add effects to this if I want to. Let's just do a couple of effects to keep it simple again for this 101 lesson. I'm going to add a reverb to it. I put the reverb at the end of the block, it's always the last thing that I use, but you can put these in any order that you want. Again, I right clicked in here like this. Let's say I put the wrong thing in here, put a drive pedal there, and I didn't want that. I can just right click it again and change it. Or if I put something in there that I don't want to use all the time, let me just go here, I'll put reverb. And we have a basic room reverb. If I want to use it sometimes and not other times, I can double click it here and that's no reverb. And I can save it. See this thing that says scenes? You can have up to eight scenes per sound. So I can call this dry. Let's save it. I'll give it a name too. We'll just call it 101. And I just save it. Now it's going to be in the AxeFX hardware saved. So if I wasn't plugged into the computer and I took it to a gig, it would be in there at 384. And let's say I go to scene number two over here are the scene selections, or I can go up and down here. And if you have a foot switch for it, you can switch scenes up and down. I switch to two and I'll turn the reverb on. Now notice that you've got a different amp loaded here. It sounds different. This letter B is going on. You have to change everything to A because you can have four different variations. I can have four different amps on my scenes. I can have four different cabinets, four different pedals. If it's changed on you, you just change everything to channel A. I'm back to the original reverb. I'm back to the original cabinet that I put in. I'm back to the original amp. We'll talk about A's, B's, C's, and D's in like a 102 lesson. Just for this lesson, we'll keep it simple. And this is my, we'll call it verb sound and I save it. So now scene two is reverb. And scene one is dry. So now with a simple pedal effect like that, if you have a foot switch board and you're using this live, you can turn effects on and off individually. You wouldn't probably use scenes just to change one effect. But if I had something with a second effect in it, let's say the, the verb channel was actually like a wet lead channel. Let's call it wet lead. And I want to put a delay in here too. I'll drop a delay in. And we will use... Again, I'm, I'm going kind of fast here. You left click to change the type. These are all the kinds of delays available. I'll do a ping pong delay. Just whatever came default here. And save that to scene two. If I go back to scene one, it's got the delay on. I have to tell it that the delay is off on scene one. And then save it. That's going to happen sometimes when you go back and forth. Something that you add later. It'll be on on all the scenes and you have to go through and check them. So my dry scene... And then my wet scene. Oop, I turned it off there too. Turn it on, save it on. Sorry about that. So one is dry. Now two has the full lead. So now you have a mechanism where if you had to hit two effects, you can instead just change scenes and it changes entire blocks of things at the same time. So you're not jumping around like a tap dancer every time you got to go to a different sound when you're playing live. So there's my very basic 101, how you can add an amp and a cab and some effects and how you change scenes and a little bit of mention there of how when you're changing scenes, it switches from A to B to C. You can have multiple different types of effects if you want to plug them into different scenes. And it, if you guys want
want to see anything more complicated, complex, or more in depth on this, please let me know in the comments below if this is working for you and, and you want to see more of it, you know, like, and subscribe as always. And, and also check out, I got a fr good friend, uh, Leon Todd in Australia who does great videos and like five minute tones and stuff. And I'll link his channel up here to check out. And this is just a great piece of gear that I am happy to do demos on and show people anything they want to see on it. Uh, if it helps them make a buying decision for themselves, that's always a good thing. I don't want people to go out there and spend in good hard earned money to only be disappointed. So, you know, YouTube and these kind of videos are a good way to check and see that you're getting a good thing. So I hope you found that all useful. And until next time, as always, keep making great music. Hey friends, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. It makes the whole world better.